uh, is the number of Akash tablets that data when sent uh, to IIT Rajasthan. 572 is the number of Akash tablets which IIT Rajasthan distributed uh, to multiple colleges. 19 is the number of colleges that got these tablets. That's it. Right. The 100,000 number that we've been hearing about, nothing's happened so far. Why did Urban got the contract? We don't know. We were competing for that particular contract? We don't know. Uh, there is a certain sense of obfuscation and uh, lack of transparency in governments today that we're all dealing with, that we're all concerned about. And this data that you see on the slide over here is all uh, stuff that we received through RTI. Uh, we filed our first RTI in March last year. And uh, so I run a site called Media Nama. Uh, we We've been writing about internet and mobile businesses for a while and uh, we started focusing on policy about two, two and a half years ago because we felt that it was impacting businesses quite a bit. Uh, I was wondering, you know, when uh, Zainab contacted me about why, uh, about actually speaking at this conference and maybe putting up a proposal for something to talk about uh, on RTI or on, on data, I was wondering, this is a hacker's group, what will I do here, I don't even code. But Essentially, we've been uh, kind of doing hack, hacking kind of journalism in a sense. We don't get access to information with a blog. So we try whatever means possible uh, to try and get access to information and data. Uh, we go and check the registrar of companies and get data from them, which most journalists don't. We've, we've been filing, we filed about 55 RTIs so far. Uh, that's not a very common thing among journalism organizations. And what we're finding is that there's such a wealth of data out there that um, you can gain access to through RTI. Uh, I'll share a, share a couple of examples with you, uh, but there's this one more, on this particular topic, there's one more slide. Um, we're wondering how much money has been given to, uh, been, uh, given to data win for the Akash tablet. And IIT Rajasthan has so far received 47.42 crore. They've given no money. So DataWinds distributed ha, has produced 600 and what, 6640 tablets. Got no money for it so far. And now the Akash 2 is coming into production. What this data does is it allows us to ask questions about what's going on. And if you look at governance in this country, if you look at digital projects, every state is uh, Doing projects, uh, in uh, uh, the government of Kerala is spending on mobile advertising on AdMob. Uh, I read that somewhere. We don't know how much they're spending. You may wonder about how this makes a difference, but there is a sense that governments are not help, are not accountable to people. That we all uh, in the last couple of years, in particular, that we've been sensing. So over here is about. Uh, close to about 250 odd pages of information on the Akash tablet that we've got from IIT Rajasthan. This includes a tender that was issued, it includes DataWind's financial statements, it includes communications between DataWind and, uh, and IIT Rajasthan on, on the tablet. So from us, for us as a journalism, uh, from a journalistic perspective, this is incredibly useful it says it takes a lot of time and effort and I still haven't been able to go through this. But we've got some crazy data so far uh, from, uh, from the Reserve Bank of India uh, on number of mobile banking transactions and we can see it's going nowhere so far. Uh, we've got data on the number of credit cards and debit cards and for many of you who are in business. Um, payment, uh, the way the payment ecosystem is evolving in India is extremely important. So we found that over a two-year period, uh, ICICI Bank's credit card base declined by 55%. So that's private company data, but it's with the government. Uh, so let's just ask, answer some of the basic questions and uh, uh, we'll move into the Q&A pretty quickly. What can I get uh, from the government? Any information? Uh, which is not deemed either competitive or confidential, going against national security 
or given to the government by a foreign organization uh, is available under RTI. There are instances where uh, they might refuse to give you information and give you some flimsy grounds. And there's an appeals process that you can follow in order to, you know, uh, get someone higher up in the information uh, hierarchy in, in the amongst the public information officers to direct the particular uh, organization's information <coughs> officer to give you that data. Uh, on a policy front, the IRDA, the insurance regulator, formulated a policy uh, which was extremely detrimental to web aggregators and we filed an RTI for the comments that had been submitted to the IRDA because what we'd heard from sources was that some of the policies that were implemented were not a part of the recommendations that were made. All recommendations that you make to a government body would effectively uh, be available to you as citizens. The PRAI, for example, uh, can regularly puts up comments that it receives from telecom operators or from citizens such as you and me on their website for anyone to see so that you know which way they're leaning. And you can actually question why a particular policy decision was taken. Why are they leaning in a particular direction when, let's say, most of the comments that they received were leaning towards another direction. So uh, they can refuse to give information on, 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 on a few grounds and we've been refused information as well. I'll give you a little bit of a hack later on how to actually tackle some of these issues as well. Um, in terms of who to get information from, you, uh, there are state uh, public information officers and there are central uh, public information officers. All of every government organization on its website is supposed to have a list of public information officers. So when you draft an RTI, you don't need to name someone also. Uh, initially, we were sending uh, RTI requests to the person who had been named and government websites update their data so frequently that it turns out the person hadn't been there for about two years. And uh, so then we realized we can just file it to the central public information officer for so and so department and we got, uh, and we got a response. You can get data from all government organizations. You can also try and get information and data on from organi uh, from organizations that are getting government grants. NGOs are not necessarily, I don't think they're covered under the RTI, I'm not very sure of this, but there's no harm in trying. If you're looking for information, you can try various ministries that you think are maybe <coughs> related to or coordinating with some organization and they're collecting information. Effectively, the government organizations are we the people. So any information that they get should be accessible to us. And therefore, you should be in a position or you should feel that you can actually request this information and get it from them. Now, how do I get this data? It's an extremely simple process. Uh, all you have to do is take a print, uh, just take a piece of paper find the address of the department or, or the organization, let's say if you're writing to MTNL or BSNL, uh, file and uh, just get the address of that particular organization, write to the central uh, PIO. Now, uh, to get an RTI responded to costs you 10 rupees. You, all you have to do is just fill up your application Write down the questions that you need answered. Go to your general post office, your GPO. Every GPO has a specific RTI desk. You can buy a 10 rupee postal order from there. What we've done is we've created a process for this. We've got, I think, about 200 rupees worth of postal order orders with us at all times. And anytime I need an RTI file, you just basically take a printout, attach the postal order to it. Uh, go to the GPO which is fairly close to where we work and there's, a, uh, there's an RTI desk which actually helps you file that RTI. Now not all all departments, uh, GPOs won't help you file, uh, that RTI desk won't necessarily de deliver to all of these organizations. So sometimes you have to send it by speed post or by courier but the cost is fairly minimal compared to the perhaps the use usefulness or the importance of the data that you're looking for. So how much will it cost? 
10 bucks to 5, but then if you need <coughs> this much of data, uh, it costs you 2 rupees per page. It's, if you're uh, getting lots and lots of data and you're trying to, uh, let's say, get it from multiple organizations, we filed about 55 odd RTIs so far. That does add up. So this is the format. Um, your first, just to the CPIO or the SPIO, give your address, give your name and your address. Make a list of documents required or questions that you need them to answer. Uh, just write that you are a citizen of India. Put in a date because they have to respond to you, and this is very important. They have to respond to you within 30 days of receipt of that application. And the central PIO can get penalized if they don't respond in time. I don't think there'll be many instances of penalties being levied, but there are several instances where uh, the response has been delayed for us. We're normally very patient, it doesn't, uh, but there are, I think, one or two instances where we've got no response at all. But out of 55, most of the, um, in most cases, we've got the responses. Now, the be this is my favorite part of an RTI application. And you can take this from me. This particular statement, which was uh, given to me by CIS, because they helped us file our first RTI. Um, quite often, when you file an RTI with a particular department, they may not be the right department to answer that question. <coughs> so the propensity is to respond to you and say, listen, I'm sorry, we're not the right place. So whoever it was who created this, this beautiful law, in the goodness of his heart, created a particular clause that said that if you, if you are not the right authority to respond to this RTI, please forward it to the right one. So you even don't even necessarily need to know whom to file an RTI with. <laughs> That's how great this law is. Uh, the second is about when you're just stating a claim that to the best of your knowledge, it's not restricted information. This is not necessary to put in, but uh, in fact, I don't even know why we put it. It's just legal speak, which again, I don't understand that uh, my friends helped me put in. <coughs> so there are a couple of tricks that we've deployed so far. The first one is you give some proof that the information actually exists. So when I'm, when I'm looking for data from the telecom regulator, I actively scout and I, you know, using search, I do a couple of tricks and fi try and figure out what are the, I look for Excel files for one, because if they're seeking information from any, any organization, they typically put up Excel sheets that those organizations have to fill up and submit to them. So I know that if they are seeking that information and that Excel file exists, then they have the data. So it's almost like reverse engineering where you're seeing that, okay, they're collecting the information, there is proof. So sometimes what we do is we, we take a printout of that sheet, we attach it to the document and say, this is the date, this is the Excel sheet on your site where you're collecting this information from this, from these type of companies. Could you share the responses with us? The other is that sometimes they make statements in the press that indicate that uh, certain information has been filed. So uh, they can't deny the existence of that information. So in case of We've done this extensively in case of the RBI in particular because they have the they have oodles of data. There's, there's so much out there that helps you make sense of what's going on. We had a you know when uh, when Airtel Money launched, uh, we wanted to figure out how they're doing, and Airtel wasn't talking about you know after the first month no company will talk about how their business is performing in this one month's time. So we filed an RTI because they had a prepaid license um, with the RBI. We filed an RTI asking for data on their performance as well as its cash card, Beam, uh, there was something called Kaizen Automation. All of these are prepaid card services that help you make transactions. So we got uh, about a year, a year and a half of information. Airtel Money, we just got one month of info. Something happened after that. This this, we filed another RTI six months late, later to get a sense of how those organizations are actually performing. You know, has Airtel money taken off? Airtel will never say that the business has not taken off, right? So, 
But here we have data to, to check whether it has taken off or not. And the RBI refused to give us this information the second time, saying it's confidential. So, point number one, proof that the information exists. So the next filing, we photocopied the first RBI response we had with the same information and said, you had given this information to us at this time, now can you give us the updated information for the entire, entire stretch of time? And we got it. Unfortunately, the data that we got from them isn't very reliable. Uh, we still haven't actually gone, you know, we haven't uh, gone about filing uh, an appeal or asking them to clarify because I think they showed Airtel's uh, amount transacted going from 65 crore in one month to about 825 crore the next month, which is impossible. So the reliability of data is still an issue with RTI, but you at least have something to work with. The, the other part is that, you know, framing the questions. When you're looking for data, uh, if you see the way we frame this particular question, right? It's number of, so this is, uh, this is for credit card transactions. The number and amount of, tran uh, of transactions processed by a credit card segmented by issuing banks for each of the following channels for each month from this period to this period in brackets or up to the latest available date. So we don't want to leave any loopholes. So use, you're all coders and geeks, so you know how if, then, and all works, right? So try and figure out how is it that you can make sure that, if, and logically put it in a manner to make sure that they don't not give you information. <coughs> Whatever you can get might be worth it. The big question that we've been trying to answer is why? Why file an RTI? Why get this data? Right. Uh, this is kind of philosophical, so you'll have to excuse me, but I, when I look at the way things are going on, there's just very little accountability in place in terms of governance. You know, if there is a road that's not been fixed for a while, how do what do we do? We can file an RTI and ask for them, ask them to give us the schedule of repair of road repair. We can ask them for information on who was responsible for getting the road done and what are the penalties. When was the last time that road was built or fixed? What are the what were the penalty clauses put in so that that road, uh, if that road would then get spoiled because of rain or whatever, uh, how much penalty would be levied? Ask them about how much penalty has been levied so far. If a contract is given to a particular organization, let's say in case of the Akash tablet, what were the grounds on which the contract was given? This may, there are some people in government who are saying that RTI is delaying decision making or delaying uh, the rollout of projects because they're questioning, continuously questioning these decisions. But effectively, we are taxpayers, it's our money, it's our right to question. At this point in time, this is the only law in the country that allows you to hold your government accountable. And I think it's about time more and more people started using it. It's been there since 2005. There are not enough people using it because we don't know how to use it. And we think it's cumbersome to do this. It's not. It's the easiest thing to do to file an RTI. There's a friend of mine. Um, his wife uh, had applied for a passport. It got delayed. And when they went to the passport office, they were asking for a bribe. What his dad did, he filed an RTI asking for why the passport has been delayed. Right? They have to respond within 30 days. Two weeks later, they got the passport. Four weeks later, they got a letter saying your passport has already been delivered. <laughs> right? For me, this is my favorite story. This is my favorite RTI story. Because it's a friend of mine who's actually benefited from this. So every time you feel that you, it's, it's a pain to deal with government, if you, every time you feel that you get angry about something that's not hap that's not, that you think is not being done right, ask questions. Um, media organizations are filters. We'll choose what we think is important during the greater common good. But for me, I'd like a situation where all of you start fighting RTIs, right? I'd like a situation where, and this is something which I wanted to propose, an idea. 
create a platform you know where you can identify issues you can create an rpi then and there you can collaborate so with this akash tagar we ask 21 questions who ask 21 questions we just find it what we did was i had five questions to ask i didn't know what else to ask so i just created a google doc put it on twitter saying this and i'm filing an rpi on the akash tagar go and ask your questions if you think this is relevant we got 21 questions right collectively we are all more intelligent than you <laughs> from the individually as well but if all of us if if well meaning citizens get together start using this start creating rpis start asking questions of government for us we want to start with data and we want to focus on you know um, getting information on the digital industry because there's a national optic fiber network being rolled out there is an issue of uh, of uh, there are several government projects uh, there is uh, you know in punjab the uh, the common service center right the contracts were cancelled all of a sudden no one knows why money was spent on those things our money was spent on those things no one knows why we if we start asking these questions we'll get more information there might be people who are held more accountable the other issue is that there are instances where uh, citizens that that where rti activists are being killed across the country if all of us start fighting rti who will they go after if all of us start asking for information who will they kill say right? if it's public so there is one issue about rti and copyright data received under rti is under copyright my sense is no government information should be under copyright because it's paid for by the citizens of this country the copyright act which was passed earlier this year our submission to the government on that was that it all software all data that's with the government should be free to use any i don't see why why cda should actually charge people for indian language forms for example but that's what happens they monetizing they are asking us to pay for the for stuff that is already paying for creating so the data that we put up under rti is under copyright i'm not sure if a scan of this these responses are going to be under copyright i'd say that share create that platform that allows you to share rti responses so that if i'm looking for certain information looking for certain answers it's there on the web so collaborate it's like for me it's uh, wikipedia is the ultimate model it's like wikipedia for rti unfortunately i don't want i don't know how to code it so if anyone wants to talk to me and ideate on what we can build so that everyone can use it uh let's do that the other idea that i have and this is not related to data in any way um is about participatory governance today uh there are public <coughs> policy consultations taking place in just about every department the way they work and we saw this first with the it rules you know the internet censorship or the intermediary rules that they passed uh, in april last year despite several complaints and they still haven't revoked uh, even though it was table it, it was brought, brought up for discussion in parliament they still haven't revoked it that uh, what they did was that they just gave 10 days for people to respond to it for uh, an ordinary citizen like me for me to first go through the whole thing try and understand law and then respond to it is extremely difficult and this is just one rule there's several laws that are created that impact all of us what do we do so there are there's a department what to do to be so small advertisement in a non descript newspaper that none of us will notice there will be people in industry who are in, who who directly get impacted by it who have contacts in the government who will get to know that this is going to come they might even get the copies of the consultation paper even before it gets made public to all of us and they get to respond whereas our views because we either don't know about it or we don't have enough time for it they don't get heard so how do you then deal with that situation i'd say that let's form a group let's uh, you know participate let's create a list of all the consultations in various sectors that are going on and let's give our views they may be taken into account they may not be taken into account but if you have strong views on something 
they could be. Uh, I submitted for the copyright bill. My one of the points that I raised, maybe others had also raised it, that got in, incorporated in, into the law. Uh, I had submitted uh, on the, to the standing committee on IT uh, on corruption in the media. Uh, I was called to pal uh, uh, I was called for a public policy consultation on that issue. It's another thing that the views they didn't, they didn't quite hear my views on that, but there are instances where the government will actually ask you to come and participate. I submitted my comments as an individual, and all of you can also participate. We don't have jury duty in India, but this is one way of making a difference if you want to. So uh, for me, the name for this is the Open Policy Project. Let's just open up governance. Uh, let's get data. Let's get policy. Uh, let's try and understand why certain decisions are make, being taken. Let's try and get uh, involved in governance because things have been going downhill for the last what, five, six years as we've seen. We have to do something about it. The media will make raise issues. I'm a part of the media in that sense, but we'll raise issues and then we, it's very difficult for us to continue staying with an issue and keep harping on it or keep going after it. We have to pick our battles in that sense, but we can all pick our battles and fight them because we get impacted by this. Um, this is, so don't let the idealism die, you know, we can collectively bring about change. Thank you. Uh, any questions? What is the format in which you get data? Is it always on paper? Oh, you know, I forgot to, I forgot to say this. This is the tricky part. When you get data from the government, it's in printouts. So we had uh, four, four years of month on month, four years of data on credit card transactions and amount transacted for 54 banks in printouts of Excel sheets. <laughs> Even though we had asked, we had specifically requested them to send us a digital copy. So only one department so far has, two departments so far have sent us digital copies. But even when we have asked for digital copy, they still make us paper page. So, to answer your question, you need a data entry operator in quite many instances, and or many of them. Can you find an organization file an RTI request versus an individual? I think you need the mic. Uh, can an organization file an RTI request versus an individual? So far, I mean, we'd like to file an organi as an organization, but I've been told that it needs to be an, uh, needs to be an individual. Quite often, organizations don't want to take on the mandate on the mandate of filing an RTI and maybe taking on the government as well. So, individuals, it is. It's on your head. Uh, what if someone doesn't uh, respond in that 30 days? You can file an appeal with the uh, with the applet authority. So on the website, there's typically an applet authority identified. Also, if you're not happy with the response that you get, you can still file an RTI or you can still file an appeal. So with the IRDA, and I, I forgot to, to complete that one. First time they refused to tell us, uh, they they refused to give us the information, uh, saying that the uh, it is the policy finalization is still under progress. So before the policy is finalized, they cannot give us the information, which is patently wrong. But uh, we file an appeal after that, and then for the same comments, uh, and they responded to us saying that uh, the policy has been finalized, but they still did not give us the information. So we filed an appeal again, saying that they hadn't given it, and in, and then they gave us about I think. 150 odd pages of comments that we again still have to go through. And what about the consequence of uh, filing RTI? Like, uh, if I want to uh, file an RTI against my own organization and later they fire me due to that and say that uh, you had signed on a paper that any time we can fire you on any ground without citing any reason. So what about that? That's a that's a consequence you have to deal with. I, I don't and I, I don't know. You'll have to talk to a lawyer on how to deal with that situation. So idealism on the RTA will lead to 
needed this astral only. <laughs> Absolutely, but you have to bear the consequences, right? Uh, we can be, we, there, are, there can be organizations who refuse to talk to us because we try and we get data. And there have been instances where we've got, so not, not RTI, but uh, other data that we've got through, from which public data which we've got from the government and uh, put up. We've received legal notices from companies saying you can't make this information public. So I've had to ask a lawyer friend to respond to him and say, no, we can. And lawyers have responded, then lawyers have responded back. And after that, no one said anything, so everything's all good. But the situations where they say that uh, uh, we can do this without citing any reason, can we file RTI for that also? You can file RTI without giving any reason. You don't have to give a reason, you just have to ask for the information. That's it. Um, hi, I really like the sound of the open policy project. I'm wondering if you can <coughs> talk about that a little bit more. And a second related question is about um, any examples you know of people actually using RTI sort of more creatively for s within some kind of activist or advocacy framework or projects, things, things like that, if you have any um, information about that. So to, to answer your second question first, uh, I'm only aware of what my organization's been doing and a few related organizations have been doing. Uh, don't know if we've been creative, but we've tried to get answers whenever possible. We started out, for example, uh, when we learned that certain websites had been blocked. And we filed an RTI, the Center for Internet and Society here in Bangalore, they filed an RTI. And we both worded our questions differently so that um, if they don't respond to us, they respond to them. So they were given the data, we weren't given the data. But um, as such, uh, I don't know about creatively. You know, it depends. So for me, getting the information out is important. You can word your RTI application in different ways to try and get it. You can file multiple RTIs with, uh, in different names. You can ask your friend and try and get the same information out because for many government organizations, the propensity is to refuse to give information. In, but in, case, in many cases, they want to give information because they think it's helpful. So even with policy, uh, when we've interacted with government departments, in some instances, they've, they said, you know, we like what you guys are doing. And in other cases, they just don't want to talk to us. We're going to have to, sorry, we're going to have to cut you off. We have to get ready for the next one. But okay. please continue questions uh, to Nikhil. Huh? Yeah, because we have to set up. We're cutting the all the sessions are short into twenty five minutes. But please continue asking questions. So, so, so can you set up while we discuss? That yeah, yeah, that's fine. But you know, I need the mic and stuff. No, I can start. Barriers, artificial barriers that need to be broken. It's our data. Yeah. I don't know, but you know, a lot of this is about challenging the status quo. And I'm saying, let's go and challenge it. If they're charging for a table, let's ask for the same data under RTI and let's see what happens. Can a government organization which has one law called RTI refuse to give you data because they're actually trying to commercialize that data? I don't think so. So let's let's see, let's set a piece of it. You have to that will work. Does that happen? They will just say these are all the attached documents that you should be. 
Yeah, they can. They can do that. You are required to pay two rupees per page. Then they won't give it to you. So you can, you can, you can, you can, but you, you can, you can also request to go and see the documents that are in the office. You can then ask for printouts for whatever you want. No, this is very important. Everything is. They don't give you digital copies. That's the problem. They still won't give it to you. Amending the laws is going to take ten, four more years, and the problem with amending laws is that when they are amended. They've already seen the damage that the RTI can do to them, right? But wasn't they thought of at the time of the law? This is the best part of the law. I don't think they saw how powerful this is. <laughs> and they passed it thinking it's, it's well meaning. But doesn't the law already say that they should see the CD-ROMs? No. <laughs> it, we've asked for it. Never been given. Yeah, no, but doesn't the law already say that? No. We've asked them, we said we'll pay for the CDs. I don't want to you know, spend 15-20 days having someone type out uh, all those tables. I'll pay for it. Sorry, yeah, that's it. Is it possible like, not yet to ask for information like, periodically, I want, I want this information as you want to <laughs> You know, um, I'll try that. <laughs> so far, I've only asked like Thank every you. single time. The reason I'm asking is, uh, I'm wondering if there's a way to use this uh, law to uh, keep like very up to date information like on a website or somewhere. Like, uh, like say the roads example that you said. Yeah. Like if you have a site which can have all the, the schedule for road repair, uh, so it's updated. There is, there is a department in Hyderabad that's actually doing, that has a website where all of this information is tracked, but it's all internal. Um, but I don't think there's any, you'll have to file and make that, you know, this is what we can do. We can actually start putting stuff about road repair. Bombay needs it, they keep, you know, every time it rains, the whole city gets just flooded like crazy. Uh, Bombay needs it more than anything, but they don't hold the government accountable. They'll keep, BMC is the richest municipal corporation in the country. Who holds the BMC accountable today? Had there been instances of PIs being filed, so uh, on the basis of RTIs? No, no, no. no. To, to give, to make, to force the government to give data in a format which is. I mean, it could no. be argued. No, I don't think. It could be argued that you know, it's an impediment. It restricts the flow of information if you if you don't give it. Right? So in the appeal process, can we not argue that it must be digital for it to be? Um, See, this is why I like this. I'm getting ideas. <laughs> no. We'll do that. But the government's not standardized. There is a law, a policy going through that's going to standardize data formats, etc. That hasn't been I'm not sure what the status is of that yet. But when you get to local data, that's not digitalized yet. It's not even going to be there. It's all going to be on a bunch of Word docs or maybe Excel. If you're lucky. They'll print it out. <laughs> yeah, so they, they, print, they give you printouts of Excel sheets. But you know, one of the things is that there is, the government has an open data project. They, they partner with the US government on East Chopra and uh, they make something, the, the CTO and CIO of the US government, they were in India. They started the project of, uh, there was a small announcement where the, they said that the project is ready and the Indian and US governments together launched it. And uh, we don't know what's happened the to that. The data sets will be available, so the, they have asked and every ministry to standardize the top five data sets that they have. Hmm. They're due to come this month or next to be Thank delivered you. to the platform. And then they have a year uh, schedule to get the rest. But there's, it's according to the National Data Accessibility Sharing Policy, there's three kinds of data that would be available, accessible, restricted, and not uh, not shareable. Hmm. We have no idea what they'll share. They will, They can easily put all their data under not shareable. Um, they can eat, It's not tied to RTI in any way. And so, but this directive says you have to put your top five, whatever that means, the ministry, on downloadable for free. Now the policy says that they can charge 
It doesn't have to be downloadable. It can be in like whatever formats they want. But these uh, these five, the census is not there. The national sample survey is not there. So a lot of uh, the really valuable data won't be on this platform. But we'll see in three months or whatever. Well, the way I would look at it is that if they don't make it, if they don't make the data available, then we should. That's why they start fighting yeah, and getting as much data to the users. Yeah, that's why what's happening is there's a divergence between the right to data policy of this API and the digital data policy of this API, which is of the national data policy. Yeah. So what happens is in this app, the, the digital data policy standardizes is there, how the data is going to be shared, what it can be, who gets to host the data, um, which is a nice thing. But all ministries have to share it. There will be, they will not host the data on that platform. Uh, the ministry will host the data. The metadata will be on the platform. There is a discussion regarding whether there should be one open data platform or the open data platform is, or the central open data platform is only giving links to the same data. Mm -hmm. No, but, but the thing is that there is there isn't a, enough of a convergence or dialogue between these two policy platforms. I'm just saying this also needs, needs to this needs to move beyond data as well. Right? It needs, needs to move into governance. Data is a great data is a great indicator, but you also need to question certain actions. Right? So, for for sometimes we don't even know what the policy is. You know, like uh, if you look at BOIP. Uh, the TRS had issued some recommendation on VOIP in 2008. And if you spoke to the ISPs and the ISP AI website itself had uh, the TRI recommendations as the applicable policy. And everyone was using that. They were doing business using that policy. And everyone I would speak with, they wouldn't have more proof. So we filed an RTI for the applicable policy of VOIP. And it turns out nothing has changed.